Hello GMO Free Idahoans, how are you? It's Leslie and it's Wednesday. Only what? Four more days till Christmas? Yay! I hope you're all having a great week leading up to the holiday. I know I am. I'm very excited. My family's going to be in town soon, so it's going to be a good weekend. But, you know, I haven't done a blog for a couple days, and um, I had to get one out because I really want to break down some important information for everybody. I recently just took an ethics class, and I thought, man, this is going to be boring. Who can talk about ethics for nine weeks? But it was actually very interesting, and it gave me an opportunity to really look at the topic of genetically modified th foods through an ethical viewpoint. And so I've decided to start a series of blogs called Unethical Agriculture, where I break down each issue pertaining to genetically modified foods and uh, see it through an ethical viewpoint and um, let everybody know what's really going on when it comes to, to GMOs because uh, we've got some unethical actions going on left and right day to day and it's really important that we understand uh, the moral and ethical standpoint of the government or the companies that bring genetically modified foods in, into our grocery stores. So, without further ado, today we are going to be talking about Monsanto's gifts to humanity. I think it's very important to understand who Monsanto is and how they started out and what they have given um, our society thus far um, so that we can decide whether or not GMOs are actually safe, effective, and um, even ethical to be pushed on onto our plates. Um, a lot of people don't know that Monsanto started out as a chemical company in 1935. Now, there are other biotech companies that produce genetically modified seed and um, even genetically modified animals that are uh, hopefully not going to be hitting the market anytime soon, but um, they're definitely pushing for them. But anyway, Monsanto is the biggest biotech uh, company. Out of all genetically modified foods produced, Monsanto accounts for 90%. And so they're definitely the leader in this industry. Now, when we think of it this way, that they account for 90% of all GMOs, which account for nearly 75% of all food in any given grocery store, especially processed and prepackaged foods, mostly processed and prepackaged foods, then we can really see the monopoly that this company has on our seed supply and on our food supply. So um, I'm going to talk about three things today that Monsanto has taken part in, and that is their production of PCBs, DDT, and Agent Orange. I think that we're all familiar with um, these chemicals and their effects, but um, I'm going to let you know a little bit more about it so you can make a decision on whether or not you think that Monsanto is an ethical company and that they're providing the best product that is um, beneficial to the greater good of our society. So let's start with PCBs. Now, fortunately, PCBs are now banned. They got banned in 1979 because they are known uh, cancer ca causers, carcinogenic, obviously. And um, according to the EPA sites, they uh, have effects on reproduction and development, endocrine disruption, and neurotoxicity. PCBs are known global pollutants. Okay? Now, Monsanto had a PCB plant outside of Anniston, Alabama. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this story. Monsanto, for 40 years, knowingly dumped these PCB toxins into the water that ran down to this town of Anniston, Alabama. Now, in 1966, Monsanto scientists went and looked at this water to check everything out, and they noticed that fish were belly up in the water. So they decided to dunk a little a fish in the water to see what would happen. And it was like this fish had been dumped into boiling water. Its skin peeled off, it started gurgling and, and spewing out blood and pus. Obviously very toxic. In fact, in 1969, they discovered that uh, this water contained 7,500 more times more the legal limit of PCBs. Very, very toxic. Monsanto didn't say anything for 40 years. Instead, they decided to poison and, in my opinion, murder some of the citizens of Anniston, Alabama, who, unlike us, we might have two parts per million of PCBs in our bodies, but these citizens have 200 parts per million of PCBs in their bodies. 
Monsanto knowingly poisoned the citizen, citizens of Anniston, Alabama. And uh, that's a really big question of ethics right there. Okay, so that's the first one, PCBs. The next one is DDT. Monsanto started producing DDT in 1944. Um, some of the ads from back then say, DDT is good for me, you know? It's going to make your apples grow juicier and bigger. Uh, your, your cows are going to produce more milk um, if you use this pesticide. Well, it turns out, once again, PCB is obviously very toxic. It was banned in 1972, and um, it was the cause of the near extinction of the bald eagle and the peregrine falcon. These birds became sterile or um, they would lay eggs but the shells would be so thin that, that no birds could actually um, hatch. And what they found is that the toxins would become concentrated into the tissue of these animals and they'd literally just fall over dead. And so um, again Monsanto is providing a very toxic chemical whether or not they know the effects uh, they're willing to play with fire and uh, so that's DDT. Next we go on to Agent Orange. Now Monsanto wasn't the only company to provide Agent Orange for chemical warfare um, but their concentration but excuse me their formula had a thousand times more dioxin um, than the other formulas so it was much more deadly and toxic. And they provided Agent Orange from 1965 to 1969. Knowing the effects um, of this herbicide, they decided to engage in this anyway. Uh, the Vietnam Red Cross estimates that 3 million people in Vietnam have been affected by Agent Orange. We know now that it causes cancer, birth defects. It's a very, very deadly and scary toxin. Um, and I hope you know that other biotech companies are now using the formula for Agent Orange which has 245T and 24D in it. They're now using 24D in their herbicide mixtures to spray over genetically modified crops. A little side note there. But um, again, Monsanto knowingly poisoned and killed innocent people um, in America and in, in Vietnam uh, all in the name of a dollar. So I know these aren't the funnest things to talk about, but um, I can't help but think about these things every time I make a food purchase. What's in it? Who made it? You know, not often we think about when we buy food, you know, the food producer. Maybe you're buying craft or fast food or um, Nabisco, whatever it is. We don't really think about where they get the ingredients to make those products and more than likely they're getting them from Monsanto and I think we really need to question um, is this the type of company that I want to own my food supply because I literally do own it through patents um, is this the type of company that I think is going to provide a safe and effective um, nutrient dense product uh, to feed to my kids and my family um, in my opinion they are completely immoral and unethical and that's why I do not support genetically modified foods and so this is a question that you need to ask yourself and your family and friends can we trust that a chemical company who has knowingly killed and um, poisoned citizens across the globe to provide us with the safest like I said, most nutrient-dense and non-toxic foods. It's not very likely, in my opinion. So um, contemplate that. I'd really like if you could share this video. Like I said, I'll be doing a series where I touch down on um, questions of ethics in regard to other issues regarding genetically modified foods. For example, um, the ethical question of patenting life. Um, the eth ethical question of forcing G GMO seeds onto third world countries, um, the ethical questions of safety studies and labeling laws. And I will address all of these things in the coming weeks. Um, I really appreciate you all sharing this video and joining me today. Thanks for helping me raise awareness about genetically modified foods, one Idahoan at a time. I'll catch you all later. Have a good holiday. Bye.